Hello, uh, welcome to another video. Uh, within this um, quick video, I'm going to be focusing on the condensation that I planned on having on the outside of my bottle. Um, obviously, this is mainly just focusing on the model itself, so I've removed the background, uh, I've removed all of the other little things, and I'm also going to get rid of the cap as well. Um, this way I can just solely focus on the lid, uh, on the bottle. Um, I'm not really sure what this is going to look like when everything is all contextualized together because um, I need to actually create it first and see everything together. Uh, hopefully it will look really good. Um, the aesthetic I'm trying to achieve with it is nice, cool and refreshing um, with the water droplets. Um, and also as well, I'm going to use a, um, a uh, effector or a... Um, what is it called? A, t -t -t uh, a shader to uh, basically stop the uh, water droplets from going on front of the label here. So this, so while the camp, so the camera will be something like this. Uh, I want the water droplets to kind of fade off at the front, so it's a l really clear to see the label. Uh, and then I'm going to use the random uh, random effector uh, just there to uh, randomize the size of the water droplets and also the orientation slightly uh, as well as using the cloner to turn one object into many objects that I can uh, align to the surface of the model. So thanks for watching, stay tuned watch um, and watch the time lapse and I will be reflecting on this at the very end so thanks very much.
Hello uh, and welcome back. Um, so from my little um, screen recording there, um, you basically see that I modelled uh, some of the water droplets. Uh, well, some I modelled the water droplet, which is here. Uh, you can see it just off camera there. It's been put into a cloner, uh, aligned to or distributed along the surface of the bottle. Uh, I've turned up the count, uh, put ten ren render instances on, uh, and uh, I was working in Cinema 4D, the R17 version, uh, and I've had to now go into the R19 version because uh, the older version didn't have the push apart effector, which I needed. Uh, and then that is basically allowed for all of the different uh, droplets to be pushed apart uh, 14 centimeters away from anything else. So as you can see, there's a, none of these are touching, although they are uh, they are in close proximity, they're not touching, which is important. So um, I've just come across something which um, has taken me a bit by surprise, I guess, or uh, maybe that's the wrong term, maybe it's, a, it's more or less a problem. Um, but from my modeling video before, um, I basically uh, created this bottle by using a, an outside profile and an inside profile to create the liquid. Um, and within the tutorial, which I'm following for the droplets, uh, the cloner is set to the surface. And within this model, there are two surfaces, one here and then what the outer one here. So basically what this is doing is it's aligning droplets to the inside and to the outside of the bottle. Um, and this is not good. So um, yeah, I'll, ju I'll just let this render off quickly. But um, basically what this is doing is it's putting uh, water droplets on the inside uh, profile of the bottle. And obviously real condensation doesn't work like that. Um, the condensation should only be visible on the outside of the bottle. Um, so I'm going to have to address this and I'm not entirely sure how. So um, I might have to go back into the original uh, file where I created all these bottles, uh, take a uh, take the profile of the outer take the outer profile of the bottle, copy that and then import it into this, uh, put that in a lathe nerb to uh, spin it round um, and basically use that as like the condensation emitter. Um, that you, you, you can basically see the gist of it. There's you've got the visible ones, you've also got darker ones behind it. Um, <clears throat> and this is obviously going to be a big problem because this isn't this is meant to be a realistic render. It's meant to be photo real. Um, so this is going to be a big problem. Um, another point that was highlighted uh, within the tutorial is that there's not really uh, any 
need for there to be all of this geometry back here, all of these droplets to be back here because the actual um, render itself will be taken from like this angle. So obviously I'm not going to be, I'm not going to see the back of the bottle. So there's no real need for any of the condensation to be like there. It's just adding extra um, geometry for the computer to render out and um, calculate. So there's really no point in there being that back section. So whenever I go um, into the old file, I take that front, uh, take the the spline profile, uh, and then import it into this. Um, I'm not sure if in the lathe nerve you can. Oh, okay, yeah. So you can change. So I'll be able to basically just specify 180 degrees, uh, and then that will be able to. Uh, will be able to, that will uh, only create half of the bottle. I can then rotate that to match the camera angle, or actually maybe it might be a bit better to have a bit more uh, to reach around the back. Um, but then I can rotate it to match the camera angle and then apply this cloner, this uh, the push part, the cloner, uh, and all of that to that half surface, basically, the, uh, the emitter, let's call it, uh, and then that will basically eradicate any um, droplets that will be generated on the back portion of the thing. But yeah, overall the actual the white the overall the white um, droplets actually do look quite good. Um, and later I do plan on using a. Um, effector I think it's either shader or a um, another effector within the MoGraph panel to um, get rid of all of the parts uh, get rid of all the droplets around the the label here so basically it'll have, it'll have like a bit of a fall off so the particle uh, the droplets will get smaller and smaller as it comes towards the front center here um, and obviously they aren't going to be white, they're obviously going to be water coloured. But overall it looks pretty good. Hello, um, so welcome back. Um, I didn't realise that I wasn't screen recording so I went ahead and complete the process of uh, creating the condensation emitter. Uh, and basically all that I did was, um, was that I went into my uh, I went to my level three folder. I uh, went into the bottle designs, uh, the work files, and then I went into the bottle models. I then took this one, the bottle six. I uh, then copied it. Uh, no. Uh, so then I brought it into here, um, and basically, um. edited the spline, hold on one second, sorry, uh, edited the spline so that uh, it was just the outer profile, uh, unchecked closed spline, so that's now an open spline, <coughs> zeroed it all out on the position scale, um, and then went into the lathe, turned that to 180 degrees, turn that on, and that's created that. From then, uh, I added the bottle back in, so that, that's all zeroed out. The bottle is here, so obviously this needs to be rotated, uh, and then just change the name to the bottle emitter. Uh, so then I can now go into the clone, uh, change the object to condensation emitter. Now that's going to put all of them, all of that geometry, onto this surface here, which will be really good. Uh, I won't have the repeating problem where it's on both surfaces, which will be a bit annoying, but hey ho. Um, and the also the really neat thing which I can do now is because I've got this, I can go back to the uh, the spline here. If I rotate it around, um, just get off that. Uh, if I go to the spline, turn that off. Go into the point selection. I can now uh, change where all of the sweat starts to appear from. So I can literally just draw all of that. Get rid turn that back on uh, and now when I turn that back on all of the condensation will 
start from here on this surface. So this is a really, really handy thing. Um, now what I've done is go to the rotate. Oh no, uh, yeah, rotate. It's 180 degrees, there we go. Um, let's turn the cloner back on, and there we go. So all of the geometry is now on there. Uh, I can put this as uh, with a compositing tag, and then uncheck scene by camera. Or in and actually, well, I didn't have to do that. I could have just done that. Clicked on that one, and there you go. That, so that's got all of the condensation on now. It stops at halfway. Uh, it shouldn't be, there you go, it's all on the, uh, so it's actually going through the glass because the, 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 um, the one, uh, the, the profile which I used was actually the outer one, it's going halfway through the glass now, which is really handy. Um, it shouldn't look weird at all, and if I just do a quick render, uh, for you guys it will be instant but for me it will take a couple minutes, but I'll do a render now, and you'll be able to see the results of them. So, after I finished um, in my last section there, um, I was at this stage here, um, and this is the uh, obviously the condenser, condensation emitter, the uh, basically the outer spline of the uh, bottle. I then tried to hide it here by... Uh, um, making the top circle then it go red and that produced this uh, and then this is the final version and obviously it's not all that great uh, let me just zoom in quickly um, but I just take that out just a tiny bit uh, go for a, a render again um, so basically off camera I've done quite a bit of work uh, I've gone through uh, the actual so the Condensation droplet itself. I've added that to the push apart thing, which you saw me do. Uh, I then put that into a random effector, and if I just click in there, you can see um, the parameters are set. So, haven't changed the position or the scale, but the rotation I've changed. So, I've allowed it to randomly spin the uh, particle 365, uh, 360 degrees uh, with a five degree um, variation. Uh, this is on the um, y-axis going downwards so it, it can deviate five degrees left or right a tiny bit and then it's got a 20% uh, variant on its uh, on its angle uh, so this produces a really organic looking uh, water droplet formation which I'm really happy with uh, it looks really good uh, and I've also added a plane effector that's what it was called um, where I've used the fall off here I've changed the scale and that's what this yellow, um, these yellow and red lines are in front. And this is basically telling the cloner here, or telling the random and push apart and everything else underneath it, that um, whenever the effector, the plane effector, is contacting this, uh, the water droplet sh should decrease in size. So the plane effector, the parameters are actually set to a uniform scale at minus one. So basically, it's shrinking them to nothing. Uh, and as you can see here, the logo, uh, the text, and the descriptive text underneath are basically droplet free, so you can see them really clearly. If we go back to that one, can't see it very well, but obviously these are going to be translucent. They're going to be um, water. It it looks really good. Uh, it looks really good. And obviously, when this close up one uh, develops or renders, sorry. Um, also, as well, another another thing. That I did was um, obviously the water droplets there are uh, stopping at the basically the neck of the bottle, so that would be interesting to see how they look. They, to be fair, it could be doing with push up being pushed up all the way to the actual uh, lip that's there. So obviously the cap would be on top. Could be doing with being pushed up, but obviously this is fairly realistic because the thing that is cold is the liquid, and there's no liquid above there it's just plain glass obviously the glass might be chilled so uh, this is something I'm just gonna have to play around with um, and so this is getting on yep there we go this is a better view so obviously you can see now that 
the larger droplets are here, uh, obviously on the side, and as the plane effector comes through the model, they're starting to shrink. And because it's a it's a cylindrical plane effector, so if I just come out of here quick, come out the camera view. Oh, okay. If I come out the camera view and then go into this, the multi view. Um, this this gives like a better highlight into how it's uh, shaped. So if I just move this quick, but you can see here that so this is where the fall off starts, the yellow, uh, the yellow cylinder, and then the red is where the fall where it is negative one. So this is it's kind of like a gradient of strength. So here it's zero, here it's a hundred percent strength, um, and it produces this, which actually looks really nice. Um, and obviously it's a bit difficult with the shape of the bottle because it balloons out so here's a really good view of how it kind of isn't best if that makes a whole bunch of sense because here it's contacting here in the center of the bottle <clears throat> and it's really clear there's nothing there but then if you push it further in to reveal the the top of the logo here <clears throat> um, there's going to be next to oh, there's going to be next to uh, next to no um, droplets on the on the sides, and it. I feel like this would be fine. This could be fine tuned even more, but uh, for now, I'm quite happy with that. And I will do one final render with a water material on them. It's going to give a better representation of what it will look like. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it so far. Um, there's some weird stuff going on here which I can't can't seem to spot but I shall have a look at that later so thanks very much this is wrapping up this kind of segment of the condensation part um, thanks very much for watching the next video will probably be the integration of this model with the new uh, scene the new uh, background um, and that should hopefully be the final final part really to the model and scene sections then after that it'll just be the liquid materials inside so thanks very much for watching and see you soon